Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another installation of an Odoo Roadshow virtually. I am so excited to be back here in beautiful San Francisco, city by the bay, instead of my living room. We're back here in the studio. If you're joining us, please let us know in the chat where you're visiting from. And also feel free to uh, ask questions throughout this presentation. We want this to be as engaging as possible. Now, for today's Roadshow, we are going to be talking about a very specific thing, particularly taking the fabrication stonework out of the Stone Age. And uh, But first of all, my name is Yosia Jim Bernard. I am the head of product communications, and I am joined today by my good friend, Safi Bajwa with Comstar. And today we are Hello. going to be taking a look at what stone fabrication means, how Odoo and Comstar working together can truly make a huge impact in this field. And uh, let's take a look at what we're gonna be learning today. So we're gonna take a look at Odoo, uh, just a general information about who we are and what we do. We're also gonna take a look at our value proposition and where we sit in the marketplace. We're then gonna take a look at an end-to-end -end demo, seeing some of the developments that um, have been created by Comstar to better understand the pain points of the stone fabrication industry. And then ultimately, we're going to have a roundtable discussion with our good friend, John, and uh, finish off with a conversation with Comstar. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. In a nutshell, if you haven't heard of what Odoo is and who we are, we are an all-in-one solution. We are a modular ERP, allowing you to have an end-to-end -end visibility for your business. That's it, plain and simple. Now, a little bit more about who we are and some of those key facts and figures. We are a growing global company with over 2,200 employees all around the world. We have offices right now in every single continent except for Antarctica. We also are represented in 175 different countries, more than 7 million users, and Safi here is one of our more than 3,000 partners. What this means is that we have a dynamic and growing ecosystem made up of Odoo, our partner, and of course, our community. This is a wonderful time to be part of this growing wave. And I am excited not only to be here today, but to be part of this growing community. Now that we know a little bit more about who we are, let's go ahead and learn about where we live in the marketplace. Now, you may have asked yourself, if you're a business owner or a business manager, is how can I run my business more efficiently? Well, let's take a look. Challenges face us every single day as business owners. So what are some of the main challenges that you have to face when running your business? Is it about integration or lack of automation? Or is it more about no traceability across the various systems of your business? Or is it more about employee accountability and usability issues? Having a easily usable technology is important when it comes to having happy employees using the system right away. Now, when it comes to stone fabrication, there are unique challenges to that sector as well. Safi, let's go over some of the challenges that face the industry. In stonework fabrication, we are diminishing margins due to competitive pressure. What, what can you tell us about that? Sure. And John can help me fill, fill out some of the answers here also. What's happening is because of the growth in construction, a lot of people are, want to join this industry. As they come in and try to be uh, stone fabricators, the barriers to entry before are getting sort of eliminated, which means people who are already in the industry have to work with diminishing margins and have to be very competitive. So the, the competitive pressures have grown significantly in, in the industry now. Now, what about the increased supply chain issues and uh, labor costs? I know that supply chain has been in the news. It's something that's a challenge, not only in stone fabrication, but across many sectors. 
What are some of the challenges specifically when it comes to supply chain here? So two different issues here. One is supply chain is delayed. It takes a much longer time to get information and raw material into uh, the organization, bringing it from uh, remote places. So the supply chain timing has increased, which has put mm. in significant challenges in inventory management. At the same time, labor cost has increased. So now you want to be able to train your labor quickly. You need automation such that you can train your labor and manage your inventory. Okay. I mean, I, those, those are challenges that I think many sectors face, but it's very expensive. I know in the stone sector, uh, because we're dealing with these precious raw materials, now, the last challenge we're going to be addressing today is going to be about inventory management, which you've addressed uh, briefly. Uh, but we're talking about tracking and avoiding high costs. What, what can you tell us a little bit more and, uh, about this particular challenge? So within, within the stone fabrication or stone industry, the challenges with inventory are significantly more than a regular industry because what happens is when a person selects a slab, you want to be able to give them exactly the slab that they've selected. For them to make the selection, you have to have a significant amount of inventory. And it's expensive mm. to manage and keep inventory. So you have to have a lot of material on hand such that clients can make their selection and also be able to specifically tack tag and track the piece of um, stone that a client has chosen. I see. Okay. So now we've identified uh, some pretty specific uh, challenges within the industry. The question then becomes, what's the solution? Well, obviously, we're here today to talk about Odoo. Odoo is going to be the solution that we're going to highlight today. And let's have a better understanding of where Odoo is in the marketplace and how it relates to uh, total business flows. Now, Odoo is going to be broken up into four main buckets that I want to highlight on this presentation. Number one, it's fully integrated. All of our applications work in concert with each other, offering you an end-to-end -end solution. Also, Odoo is quite flexible not only for your workflows within the system, but it's also flexible to support many different sectors uh, in, in the business environment. Odoo is also intuitive. It's intuitive to use, and we're gonna have a closer look at that today to see the look and feel of our Odoo applications. And then finally, it's fully featured. It is a feature-rich solution supporting all aspects of a business. Now. Looking at what exists in the marketplace today, ERP solutions are these legacy softwares that we all know. SAP, Microsoft Dynamics, Oracle, NetSuite, for example. These are monolithic systems that were created with the CEO of multinational companies in mind, not necessarily for the user. These systems are difficult to implement, are difficult to use, and difficult, quite honestly, to fit into the niches of most companies. They were made for big, big, big companies, and the barrier to entry is extremely high. They're expensive to use. Now, a, a result and a reaction in the market against these systems were these single-use applications that are found on the cloud. They are feature-rich, they're user-friendly, they're accessible, However, they only support one aspect of your business, QuickBooks for accounting, for example, or Salesforce for CRM. Odoo is the perfect bridge between an end-to-end -end solution of an ERP with a friendly, a friendly and also extremely uh, feature-rich product that's on the cloud. It's the best of both worlds. Now, something that many companies have to face with 
every single day is the fact that they have to use a series of different applications to manage their business. This is a headache that we have all seen before. Right now, there is no central source of truth. Moving data from one place to another can be burdensome. Training employees on multiple systems is also not very efficient. So this system truly is not the most efficient way to manage your business. Odoo eliminates the need to have disparate systems by having an all-in-one solution. Odoo's modular architecture is built on a series of interconnecting applications, allowing companies to truly have full visibility and traceability across their entire company, and they can scale and grow as needed. Our modular architecture allows for businesses to start with only a few or a handful of applications. And as their needs grow and change and scale, Odoo grows and changes along with you. So now that we know a little bit more about Odoo, who we are, what we do extremely well, and where we sit in the market, I would like to take this now to the next level and see how Odoo works within this very specific sector in stone fabrication. And for that, we're gonna go into my database and go over the following workflow. All right, we are going to start with our contact application. From then, we are gonna generate a new quotation on our sales app, going then into our field service app, then into our manufacturing application. And then we're gonna do with our install using that same field service application, finishing off with, with our invoicing. How does that sound, Safi? Sounds good. In fact, Yoshi, you, John can help describe some of the things that are happening with the BOM. When, when the sales gets created, it's his brainchild that we implemented. Well, we're very fortunate to have John here. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump right onto our database and see what our series of applications look like. Now, here I am on my Odoo database. I am the administrator and I have access to all my applications. As you can see, it's, they're beautifully organized and they're easy to identify. Like I mentioned earlier, we're gonna start with our contacts application. I can find my contacts easily by finding customers, for example. And my search bar is right here. Or I can also just easily go back into my contacts application. So there's many forms to, many ways to get to the information that you're looking for, not necessarily going into the app itself. All of my contacts right here are represented as tiles. And what we're gonna see is a continuity of look and feel across all of our Odoo applications, starting with our menu bar, our search bar, our action items, which we'll see later, and then of course our dashboard right here. Now, for ease of searching, I am going to go into my list view to better find my customers and here they are. I can group them by a salesperson, or I can also include different filters to easily search for my particular customers. Now, today we're gonna to be dealing with A, B, and Homes. They are our, one of our best customers. And what we see here is a 360 degree view of our customer. Any touch point, anything associated with our customer is gonna be right here on our smart buttons, anything that's associated with the sales, any in outstanding invoices, current invoices, anything at all, as well as contact information is all right here on my fingertips. The last feature I wanna show you and highlight is going to be our chatter feature, which we can have internal messages within the company, as well as internal to external messaging right now. Odoo can easily create an email right here from the chatter, log an internal note, or even schedule an activity allowing me to have full visibility of what my next steps are when dealing with this customer. All right, 
now that we have a good understanding of the look and feel of our Odoo applications, let's go ahead and start with our workflow. And for that, I'm going to go back into my home screen and start on my sales application. Here we are in my sales app. And what I see here is all of the various quotations that have been created in the past. As you can see, it has the same look and feel as the contacts application, allowing for that intuitive work that we talked about earlier. We're going to create a brand new quotation. And what we now see is our quotation template, which is right here. Now, we discussed that we were going to be working with a, B, and Homes. The moment I select that customer, all of the customer information has been pre-populated, allowing me to efficiently run through this quotation on the fly. We also have all of the same smart buttons that we're going to be seeing throughout this workflow prominently featured on the superior part of this quotation. All right. Let's go ahead and create a quote on the fly. This could be done in my office, in a coffee shop, in front of the customer. Anywhere there's Wi-Fi, I can go ahead and create this quotation. And for that, let's add a product. After a phone call with our customer, they are looking to uh, have a new counter installation. When I click the bill of materials, it's going to pull up our bill of material uh, worksheet that allows then us to select the various products for this highly complicated uh, this highly complicated product. Now, Safi, can you tell us a little bit of what we're seeing right here? Yeah, actually, I want John to describe how he designed this counter uh, selection of counter and all of the things that come in as a result of selecting the counter. Counter, and what was your thought process behind it, John? Everything that we do is basically unique. It's one of a type, type item. We also do a lot of commercial items, which is duplicate, repetitive, even though each one is template, so it is unique. You have variations in an apartment building from one unit to another where the drywall's off a little bit, the counters are off, the cabinets are off, different filler strips, different appliances. We had to come up with a way that we could be able to model this that the information was collected accurately and be able to carry it from all the different steps of our process. Our first step of the process comes from the sales side of it. Once we mm -hmm. determine the rough cost and estimate for it, that way the customer would decide either to move on or not move on. Then we go through a process of templating, actually where we go out and find all of the exact measurements and collect all the field level information and not always is the information provided to us in the initial step accurate? Um, we need to be able to identify those issues from point one where there's inaccuracies. So as our template goes out, we wanted to be able to be able to show our templater exactly what they should anticipate on the job. There are set, the first set of eyes to what could be wrong with that. So when you're going through this, we can constricted the options where typically people could do whatever they wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, you have a base size cabinet that is X amount, meaning that a sink of one size will fit in there and a sink of another. If I have a 24 inch base cabinet, I obviously can't put a 32 inch sink in there. But yet in the industry, it happens on a daily basis. The customer has a wish, a desire, doesn't make it practical. So we had a lot of different things that we had to eliminate to be able to be checkpoints. Otherwise, it's an extremely expensive process due to the size, the expense, the um, inherent danger of moving these materials and, and dealing with them. And some of them are absolutely unique that you'll never see again. I mean, you can have onyxes and semi-precious materials or, believe it or not, mother of pearl. Mm. You don't want to make a mistake. So, again, we try to take the point of not slowing the process down in a time fashion, slowing the process down so that we could identify every issue that could possibly occur during this process. 
And it's it's probably taken a good six months for us to really iron through the majority of the issues. Um, we worked in reverse. Instead of working on building a product and then building a bomb from that, mm-hmm. we said, let's build the bomb. Let's use bomb templates and restrictions so we right. can eliminate the number of choices that could be an error on a salesperson's side. And then move the process forward. So we took a little bit of a reverse engineering approach to this. When I think that's what pretty you're smart. At, when you're looking at the bomb right now and you go through the product categories for a countertop, these are the basic options that are selected. The questions that you would go through the customer to get this information. First item is obviously the material. You pick a material, you pick your edges, and each one of these represent another process in the countertops. Now, with the typical bomb, would go in. If you made it, it becomes historical. We had to make Mm -hmm. a um, process so that we can go back and edit it because, again, you have a customer that comes in, you go through the basic blueprints or the plans or the 2020 kitchens or whatever the design is, and things change during the process. We don't want to start all over again. We want to be able to go back and edit what we have and modify it. And it's like anything else. A lot of these projects are not an instantaneous. In other words, you don't come in on a Monday, you buy your, you know, your item, we're templating on a, on a Wednesday and you're installing on a Friday. This process right. takes place during the, the design phase. Um, you know, starting with cabinets also. They can change the cabinet designs. They can change some functionality. So we had to have the flexibility to be able to modify it as we go. We this wanted is highly to have, agile. One of the things we wanted to do is try to have all the information in one location. As a company, one of the things that we have experienced, and I'm fairly new, two years, is extreme growth. We went from about three million this year. We're probably going to hit close to forty million, and that's over a four-year wow. time span. When you go back and you look at the one-slide presentation you had with the ADP and the monkey champ email and everything else that's what they did here right <clears throat> you're talking about moving in an enormous amount of inventory that are not simple boxes that go on a normal forklift and come in and out the majority of our products are imported from all over the world uh italy spain south america uh southeast asia um hey, you're dealing with all of the global problems and everything else and what that caused was a lack of efficiency because it made people have to remember everything. Mm. And it's one thing when you're dealing with, uh, you know, you know your jobs and you know every coworker that's around you and everybody can say, hey, we remember Mrs. Smith. Yes, she wanted this. Oh, by the way, Mrs. Smith called and left a message for salesperson Jones and make sure you update it. Well, that was easy when it was 20 counters a week. Now that's a hundred counters a day. Right. That- so John, allow me to, to go ahead and interject real quick. So this has allowed you to scale in a way that is allowing cool. you to do it efficiently without a lot of waste that goes on. And this is right here, an example of the bill of materials at the quotation level. We have all of the different variations and components of the job itself. Mm-hmm. Templating, as you said, we're going to take a look at templating next, but that's the crucial part of the process itself. We're going to go ahead and select our template service. When a template service is created, it's going to trigger a work order for our field service application, right, Safi? Yeah. Great. And so these three final components are going to trigger work orders for our field service app. Now, let's go ahead and save this, move right along. And then we have a complete quotation with all of the components that are needed for the fabrication of this counter. We go ahead and check everything out. And as you can see, we have a detailed product description. Each of these items are serialized. 
And then we can go ahead, send by mail to our customer. But more importantly, this is the back end side. Let's quickly take a look at what the customer sees in a very organized and beautiful way to better understand what the quotation looks like on the front end. So here we have what the customer sees. We have the quotation reference number on the top prominently featured, the customer information, and then everything that we have included in that quote right here. The customer can easily accept and sign online or give feedback if there's some element that was not what was discussed in the initial conversation, discussion point that could be amended or it could be fully rejected. In this particular case, we are going to hit the ground running and continue on with this work and accept and sign. It can be an easy as an electronic signature. All right. So instead of sending that through, let's go back to our quotation on the back end and keep going on with the demonstration. All right, so what we just did right now is create a quote. Once the customer signs and can give us that green light, we are going to be able to confirm this quotation. So let's go ahead and confirm it. And once it's confirmed, we have another extra safeguard that lets us now confirm on the date. Today is the 26th, and we confirm. The moment the confirmation is, is uh, completed, what happens, an automatic delivery is created, and then a manufacturing order is also created. However, now it's time for the templating. Would, would you agree? Absolutely. That's right. All right. Let's go back to and our Odoo home screen and go into our field service application where we are going to template this counter for our customer. The first thing we see here is going to be our dashboard. Let's go ahead and remove all of our filters and then look at list view. And then our list view right here allows us to see all of the installs that we have just created with the sales order and of course the manufacturing orders right here. Templating is the first step. And let's take a look at our template service worksheet. And here we are. Again, we have our smart buttons right on the top. This. And we first want to template this by assigning. Uh, let's go ahead. Who do we want to assign today, Safi? I think the first guy. Tommy, let's go with Tommy Smith. All right. So for templating, that's going to be one day. How long does it typically take, John, to template something? Uh, a typical window is about an hour and a half. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and start. Once that we have this assigned to Tom, we're going to start. And Safi, the first thing we want to do right now is... A template file is that correct yeah so they take the measurements using a laser device collect those measurements into a file and then they have the opportunity to upload that file into this task all right we can go ahead and, and they can all of upload these, uh, multiple. Great. So we can upload multiple files, multiple pictures, and we'll go ahead and save that. I'm going to go and use my breadcrumbs to go back to the template service worksheet. As you can see, the time is running. However, if we go down here and see the, bio, the bomb components, we also have a template checklist. John, you were talking about this earlier because of how many inaccuracies exist in, this, in the industry. So this is a Correct. critical part of the template uh, templating uh, portion of the work. Can you tell us a little bit more about this part? Well, the templates are our eyes 
on the job site for the first time. Again, customers can come in and be a little over anxious and tell you everything is ready. Um, some of the basic things, are the cabinets installed? Are they secure? Are the appliances there? Are all of the basic questions that we need to have answers to, or were they accurate? Um, something as simple as, what, where is the location in the building? What's the egress to it? What type of access? Do we need a crane to bring this in? Um, these are the simple questions that we expect the templars to be able to give us the answers to while they're there. Now, you know, in the past, that was done with phone conversations. Call the salesperson. Hey, by the way, we have no problem. Or tell the install manager. Hey, when you go to, you know, Bob's house for the job, I just left there four hours ago. I think there was a tight turn in the staircase. Maybe we should put an extra seam or you're going to need two extra people to bring this in. Mm. Trying to eliminate all this because everything in this business, like any other business nowadays, is efficiencies. And we needed a way to accurately be able to not only monitor that and collect the data, but also hold individuals responsible for their portion of the process. I always like so, to say that Odoo allows a level of visibility and visibility, full visibility equals accountability. And this is an excellent absolutely. example of that. Absolutely. Um, again, let's it, go ahead and save it. So, there's a bit of a delay. There's a challenge with the delay. Go ahead, John. You were saying something. Well, what I was saying is, and, and I don't want it to come across as, oh, it's a big brother purpose. More as an aid, because we're all human. We forget things. We all make mistakes. Right. And having a reference that multiple eyes can go to helps eliminate these mistakes. Excellent. If you notice that across this task plane with all of this, you'll also find this on the sales order. You'll find this on a bomb because the idea is that everybody that touches this touches and has the same type of view, even though different people interact with it at different points. It allows us to come back and identify and be able to collaborate efficiently with each That's other. Right. So once this once this portion is finished, I'm going to mark it as done. Now, once this is done, it is time to actually manufacture working in the stone. And for that, we're going to our manufacturing application going straight into my back into my home screen. Here's our manufacturing application right here. And the, we're going to go into our, see all of our manufacturing orders. And what do we see? Highlighted in blue, it is the next MO that we have to work on with all of the same um, source numbers that we were accustomed to. Again, that continuity of, of use is right there. And we have our dashboard with our manufacturing order. We have our smart buttons on the top and everything that we need to know about this particular item right here. Now, the first thing we need to see is if we have the availability of these materials, right? So right now we have a few of them that are in red. So let's see if we have them in the warehouse. I check for availability. And we do. So green means go. It's time now to start cutting the stone and actually manufacturing this countertop to the specifications that were indicated in the quotation phase and in the templating phase. <coughs> Great, so we're going to make that. What specialized tools do you use, John, for this to happen? We're using, well, first off, we have an approval process. The files okay. are reviewed by the salesperson because again, the salesperson is the only one that knows they, what conversation they have with the end user. So we expect them not to testify to the accuracy of the measurements, but that the details on the template file are present based upon the requirements of the bomb. Once they go through that process, then it creates your picking order, identifies the slabs that are for this job. They are brought in. 
and then they go through a multiple step manufacturing process. Great. Then it's completed as being done. It then becomes inventory, and then it allows uh, the, inst the scheduling of the installation. There's no sense in the schedule something that is not ready to go out. It also allows us at this point to be able to make any type of modifications where there are more material. It's a natural resource. Stones do break at time. Um, you could scrap the material and start the process over again. Wonderful. Now, once we produce uh, this counter, for example, and we mark as done, Odoo mm -hmm. automatically creates a series of various reports with traceability, product moves, our valuation, and ultimately our cost analysis. These are automatically generated. But before we actually install, let's go ahead and approve that delivery. So we're going back into our uh, home screen. We are going to our sales application. And we want to go ahead and approve that delivery order. Here's the delivery. And we go ahead and approve it or validate it. All right. Now, once that's validated, the next thing is we are going back into our field service because this has to be installed to our customer's home. So it's going to be very similar to what we saw in the templating uh, part of this workflow. And let's go ahead and find that again. So the first part was the templating part. The second part is right here on the install. As you can see, again, the same reference numbers between the sale and the manufacturing order, and it has the same look as the templating aspect. But first, let's go ahead and install and have an assigned individual. Do we want uh, do we want this to be the same person? So, so John, different, different people do the installs. That's correct. So let's use. Okay, William. then let's get let's have William then do it. Also, John, how long does an install job ta usually take? Uh, it's going to vary on an average job, maybe an hour to an hour and a half. All right. That's pretty good, actually. So once that is done, we are going to start the installation process. Now, Safi, how are these smart buttons used in this particular aspect of the workflow? Again, you know, those install, once it's done, you want to take a photo of the installation, have that handy so that you have uh, you know, something that you can show what it looked like when your person left the site. All right, let's go ahead and do that. And, and just like thing. in the All of this is connected. Template. You know, all, all, Here we go. We can upload several several images as well, and we can go ahead and save that. All right, let's go back using my breadcrumbs to the actual install counter worksheet. John, can you tell us once this is complete, what happens internally on your end? We basically close the job out. All the financial ends taken care of during the process. Uh, if it's a larger, larger commercial job that has multiple units, then we go through the billing process. And one of the things that is wonderful about the sales order side is that we have the ability to have multiple units or multiple quantities and be able to duplicate them during the process and be able to see at what stage of the job we're through. In other words, you have 30 units, we've shipped 15, we've invoiced five of them, or we invoiced 10 of them. Um, it also gives us a historical perspective of everything that we've done. If there's any type of concern or issue that comes up in the future, we have the ability to go back and be able to maintain these records indefinitely 
to be able to review this. And there's a lot of times that you have a customer that came in and they loved your service, they loved your prod, product. And a couple of years later, they come back and they want to do something similar. It gives us the ability to go back and look at our history with them, be able to refresh your memory, um, to be able to know exactly what we used, if we're going to use the same item, if we're going to extend the project in any way. Um, it, it gives us a central source that we can go back and manage that relationship with the customer from the beginning. That's great. John, and one it, of the, it also builds on your credibility well, as well. Yeah. Yoshi, one other thing I want John to talk about is how he changed the deposits. So you have multiple tasks and apply deposit to multiple tasks. So John, could you just describe how what the practice is in the industry and what you did here? Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, let me hear your question again. It's about deposits, <laughs> applying the deposits. Deposits on the various stages. tasks. Correct. Yes. Um, uh, the financial deposits, right, Safi? That's right. Yes. Typically, what we end up doing, we have a number of different clientele. Anything from, you know, one-off kitchens in the house, and and we don't do just counters. We build bathrooms out of some of the rarest and most elegant marbles that you'll ever see. Um, we do work throughout the whole country, and. It's phased. It's not an instantaneous where you're going to go in and do three vanities in a kitchen. So one of the things that we had to do was manage the, not only the process of the project, but also manage the financial end. Right. So a customer might select a material, whether we have it in stock, whether we import it, or we go to a foreign country and show them the colors or the materials, and they select it that way, and then we import it. So there's different levels of deposits. And the old adage of one hat did not fit all. In other words, we couldn't take the same approach to a walk-in, one-off kitchen that was gonna be a $5,000 job, which is a simple rule. You pay 50% up front, you secure and lock the material that we have. Once all the templates are done and we're ready to go to fabrication, the balance is built out and then we go on with the process. When you're dealing with these larger ones, you're dealing with different type of uh, progressive payments. Mm -hmm. And that always became an issue because it didn't matter if it was NetSuite or QuickBooks, there was no natural way to handle that. So what we did was we developed where we could do a progressive billing that could either be progressive deposits on different procurements of materials. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll do residential projects that are in the seven figures that are a year in the staging process before we ever actually cut anything and ship it in. Or you can start a project and it keeps progressing as you go. We had to have a way to manage that. And you couldn't go back to spreadsheets and you couldn't go back to memories and you couldn't go back to, to odds and ends. So we developed a system where you could take multiple deposits which are inherent in do, Odoo itself. The issue was the application of the deposits were only based upon whether you build it or you didn't build it and apply the deposit or don't apply the deposit. Mm. So what we did, we made it so that it was based upon the percentage of the job that was done. So I could have five deposits on the job as there was other procurements of materials for the customer. And as we did different line items, we had the option to say, okay, apply this percentage of the deposit, which is a direct reflection to the, the deposit amount and be able to then apply it properly so that everybody, whether it was a customer or us or accounting or sales, were on the same page. Because before it was always explanations. Mrs. Smith, you gave us a deposit on day, the first of the month, you gave us one on the 15th, that was for this, this is for that. We build out this section and it didn't have to be in the chronological order. And it became a lot of confusion for the last mm. lack of a better term. You know, the controller on the back end could sit there and add the, the beans and he knew where we were at. But then he had to convey that to the salespeople or confirm with the salespeople. Did this take place? Did this not take place? And we tried to get it to the point that the system maintained the records in a course of the way our business works. Mm -hmm. We also, because we 
are a fabricator and we are an importer, we're a manufacturer of sorts. We have different tax implications. I don't deal with taxes as a reseller where either I give you a sales tax uh, certificate or not, and I'm going to pay tax at the time of sale. I also have use tax, manufacturing taxes, import duties, uh, different type of costs. So to be able to report that to all of the different agencies that we deal with, we had to have accurate records. And that's something that's a uh, matrix with, within itself. I mean, John, this the, the taxing situation and the whole financial aspect of it is could be a completely different <laughs> webinar just it, because of it, its complexity it, 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 along absolutely. this particular Correct. industry. Correct. And, and again, uh, I think like Safi said before, you have a lot of people that enter the business because in the past it was an extremely lucrative business because you're dealing with something yeah. that starts out at 1,200 pounds and goes to whatever. And having the resources to be able to do, you know, obtain the materials and be able to perform the service. But it's like anything else. Everybody else at some point finds it to be lucrative. They get involved with it. As more people get involved with it, the margins go down. Right. And that's when efficiencies become important. And there's no business that's just one thing. I can sell widgets all day long. Somebody's got to be able to make those widgets. Somebody's got to be able to account for those widgets. And there's many different parts of a business other than just I make something beautiful that you love and you're willing to pay me for. And that's the part that was very hard to tie together from inventory management to the design aspect of it, to the art of the installation to it, and then running the day-to-day -day business. So it, it, it's a quite complicated process, and we've spent a year working on this. I mean, it, it sounds extremely sophisticated. We've only touched the surface, really. We're at the final stage of this entire workflow. We're not even going to get to the accounting aspect of it. But for right now, we are just going to see everything that has been done today. We have our final uh, work order. Every All of the pieces that have been included in this workflow are right here on one page. We're going to easily create an invoice with a click of a button. And then we're going to deduct the down payments. I know that you were talking about various payments throughout this process. We're going to go ahead and just then create an overview invoice. It's going to highlight again all of the information that we talked about in the beginning. And then here is our invoice that I'm sure, John, you are very familiar with. We're going to register and then post. All right. So just a recap of what we did today. We were able to quote our customer. We were able to then see all of the various components of the bomb to template the job. Go ahead and then manufacture the pieces of the stone. Like we know we have different varying types of stone from granite to marble to semi-precious other types. I mean, John, we can talk all day about what you do all and day. all of the different sorts of stones that you work with from around the world. And then ultimately the installation process using our field service app and invoicing. Again, this was just a small example of how Odoo was able to accomplish all of these complicated or sophisticated workflows within the system, allowing me to have full traceability not leaving my database at all. And this is, I think, the reason why Odoo is so powerful and why we are gaining so much traction. All right, we're leaving our workflow, we're leaving our demonstration and going back into our customer success story. Now, we've had a chance to talk to John throughout this demonstration. I want to learn a little bit more, John, on what were some of the, you know, we're taking stone fabrication out of the Stone Age. What were those specific challenges, again, that you particularly were dealing with that inspired you to seek out Comstar and ultimately work with Odoo? Again, because there's an artistic element to this. We had, uh, I again, I have been here for about two years, and one of the things that I saw that was the most important was the control of the inventory. Um, 
I had to have an ability to be able to control the inventory with the workflow that integrated with the ability to produce what's being sold. If we have, and let, let's say we have 500 standard items here. There's 5 million. Anybody can come in and want whatever their heart desires. You have to be able to manage the process of procuring the material, bringing the material in, carrying through the manufacturing and workflow process. Um, you also get material because it's a natural stone that has defects in it. We have to be able to identify those defects. We have to find mm -hmm. out. Um, we, we've got to be able to hold our suppliers accountable on certain issues. So inventory was the biggest thing that I saw that had the first challenge. And because there's waste factors that are involved in this, it's not cookie cutter, it's not a straight number. We had to come up with workflows that work the gamut of the financial side along with the practical side of what had to happen on the day-to-day -day operations. Um, and the inventory is a big driving part of the financial background of the business. Second now, thing we had to be able to do is control our accounts receivables. Exactly. So I've had backgrounds in the past with uh, NetSuite. I've worked with them for many a years. And it's not a product that I feel suits this industry because of the exact diversification of this industry. Mm. You're dealing with a number of different type of materials. Some are major worldwide public uh, traded manufacturers that are shipping and they have one process and then you have a guy that's in Italy that's cutting up blocks and he specializes in two stones and he still works like it's 1934. Right. So we had to have a way that we could yeah. function with all of this. And I felt that Odoo was the best overall product yeah. that would be able to suit all of our needs where we had the ability to take the natural workflows and customize on it and build throughout the whole process without having to integrate a number of third-party items on there. And that's just it. Now, John, we know exactly what your pain points were. There's a lot of archaic aspects and elements to a extremely old industry. I, I mean, we're taking it out of the Stone Age, and there's a reason it's called the Stone Age. The solution naturally has been using Odoo and understanding how you've been able to uh, use all of these applications for full traceability. Tell me a little bit about your successes. What has been the result as as you've worked with Comstar? How has efficiently efficiency improved, and what have been the results of of going into this uh, using Odoo as your solution? Uh, the two largest things, other than the workflow and being able to see the process cleanly. The two biggest things that I have noticed the difference, which again is from the business aspect, is being able to control the financials and control the inventory, which again are hand in hand. We were in the past using a waste factor that was approximately 30%. We've been able to be able to work with efficiencies that have been able to get our factors down on projects under 7%, which is basically unheard of. Uh, we use very advanced technologies when it comes to the manufacturing end of this. And with the manufacturing end, we were able to marry this together with it and be able to have them communicate with each other. I mean, it sounds so, like it's a huge win for you. Yes, the company has really enjoyed benefits of it. And again, this is new. So it will go through a progression of improvements and modifications, which will only lead to more efficiencies. Right. I have, What's next I can... for Stone Tech? Um, <laughs> what's not next for Stone Tech? Uh, we're continuing to grow at a rapid pace. We're able to service our customers better. And it's like anything else. If you build something good, they will come. And, you know, I would say that probably what I see being the next item beyond the growth and everything, I think you're going to see a better overall quality of life throughout the business because 
the stress levels. We are, our people are dedicated. They love what they do. They're artistic by nature. They are not number mm -hmm. people. They want to make beautiful things. And it doesn't matter if it's a salesperson or the procurement that's seeing the most beautiful stone that's unique for its type, or if it's the guy putting it together or the guy that's installing it. They all have an artistic point of view, which usually means they have a lack of a business aspect to it. But as the two of them co-mingle, co-aside in efficiencies, I think you're going to see that everybody is going to have a better overall quality of life, stress level, or however you want to to portray that or, or phrase that. And in return, your customer is going to be the ultimate beneficiary of it. I mean, those are wonderful and music to my ears. I like to take this opportunity, John, to really thank you for coming today and explaining oh, uh, the secrecies welcome. of your business and how Odoo has been able to take you out of the Stone Age and propel you to the 21st century. Now I'd like to hear a little bit from our sponsor. Uh, Safi, can you just give us a little overview of, of your value proposition and how you help your customers? So uh, we try to take on complex projects usually where there is a significant effort required to understand what the customer wants. We were very lucky with John and with Stone Tech that we found a customer who had a vision. So that's what made us successful, having a person with a vision who could then guide us. And we now have uh, something that would be extremely beneficial for others in the industry. What would you say is your recipe for success? Listening to our customers and taking them very seriously. Their concerns become our concerns. When they have an issue, when John calls me middle of the evening on a Saturday, we will react immediately and respond. And that's really how we build our relationship. And, Safi, and I'd like to take, again, this opportunity to thank you for participating and sponsoring honest, call it all. this Odoo Roadshow. I want to finish today by just highlighting again why Odoo is the solution for you. It's fully integrated. It's a modular architecture that allows for full traceability across your business. It's also highly flexible, as you saw here, not only for the stone cutting industry, but for many industries around the world. It is user friendly and it's intuitive. As you saw that the look and feel and that continuity of use made it easy and enjoyable to navigate through the system. And ultimately, Odoo is affordable. It's made for small to medium sized businesses, but also is scalable and robust enough for multinational enterprise companies. With that, I'd like to thank everyone who participated and has been here in the chat. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you are a current Odoo partner and you would like to feature a success story or something that you are proud of with one of your Odoo implementations, please talk to your account manager and see if we can have a nice Odoo roadshow right here like we did today. If you are considering trying Odoo, go ahead and go on odoo.com and download a free trial. You have two weeks to check it out, play with the system, and see how an integrated suite of applications can truly make your life that much more efficient. On behalf of my friends and colleagues here in San Francisco, I wish you all an exciting and happy good afternoon. And remember, oh, do it all. Thank you very much. <laughs>